Today we're going to learn how to determine if function has an inverse. So a function has an inverse if it is a one-to-one -one function. And uh, if you might remember, for a function to be one-to-one, -one, it has to pass the horizontal line test. So certainly if it passes the horizontal line test, then it has an inverse because that means it's one-to-one. -one. So let's see what we're talking about. Let's look at the example down below on the left-hand side. Left-hand side, we have a graph of a function. And you should be able to see that this function ha uh, is one-to-one -one because for every uh, y value, there's a unique x value. And therefore, pass the horizontal line test. F y is 4. It, the horizontal line only intersects the graph in one place at x equals 1. And that would be true for every horizontal line. Uh, it only intersects the graph in one place, which means for every y, there's a unique x. If we want to graph the inverse, we've learned how to do this before, and we do that by interchanging the x's and y's. So if I just reproduce the original function right here, and we interchange the x's and y's, we would get the blue line over here. You might also remember that uh, the graphs of inverse functions are really reflections of each other across the line y equals x. Notice we have the line y equals x right here. And those are, both those graphs are reflections across that line. In other words, if you will look, make believe that line y equals x was a mirror, and you stood on the blue line and looked in the mirror, you should see a line that looks exactly like the red line. In other words, it's reflection. So now, let's look at an example of a function that, that, does, that does not have an inverse. So here's a nice parabola. And this uh, parabola, this quadratic function, does not have an inverse because it is not one-to-one. -one. We could pick any y value and draw a horizontal line. You'll notice it intersects it in two different places. That means you're happy for one y, you have two x's. Therefore, it is not one-to-one. -one. As long as that happens at least once, it's not a one-to-one -one function. So even if it doesn't happen at 0, 0, it certainly happens in lots of other places where for one value of y, you get two values of x. So this is not one-to-one. -one. It fails the horizontal line test. And therefore, its, fun its inverse is not a function. Well, let's see what that means. Let's draw the original red graph, this nice quadratic over here. If we reflected it across the line y equals x, which is this blue line here, then we would get a graph that looks like this. By interchanging all the x's and y's, we would get this. Now, you might say to yourself, well, there it is. There is the inverse. But you might remember that this green graph is not a function. And the question is why. And the reason is what, what it says in this box. Let's make that a little bit bigger so you can see it. A relation f is a function if different inputs always give different outputs. So if different inputs, which are our x's, always give different outputs y's. This is really the opposite of what the one-to-one -one function definition says, which is if different outputs always give different inputs. So if relation f passes the vertical line test, it's a function. So let's, let's look at this example here with the green line. You might note that if I were to pick an input like uh, 5, and I were to look at where uh, 5 is on the green graph, it intersects in two different places, doesn't it? In other words, for one value of x, there's two different values of y. And that's true in many different places. For one value of x, there's two different values of y. In other words, it fails the vertical line test. So this green graph, which we reflected across the uh, line y equals x, turns out not to be a function. Now, you might be asking yourself, what does a function look? So here's an example. The graph on the left passes the vertical line test, it is a function, 
because for every one value of x, there's just one value of y, no matter where I draw the vertical line. So this is a function. And the one we just did, that green graph, is not a function because it fails the vertical line test. For one value of x, there's two values of y, so therefore not a function. So going back to what we were just talking about, notice that the function on the, the graph on the left, if since it's not one-to-one, -one, when you reflect it over here across the line y equals x, you certainly could get a reflection, but it fails the vertical line test. It means it's not a function. So if a function is not one-to-one, -one, it does not have an inverse function. I hope that's clear. Let's do a problem. Does this function have an inverse? Well, you could try reflecting it across the line y equals x and then seeing if it's a function, but we learned the easiest way to do it is to see if this is a one-to-one -one function. And the question is, is this is this one-to-one? -one? Well, does it pass the horizontal line test? Clearly it does not. For every one value of y, there's two values of x, not just one value of x. Therefore, the answer is no, not one-to-one, -one, and therefore, it does not have an inverse. Well, I hope that's clear. Um, so let's look at another type of problem. Let's say we have a function that is not one-to-one, -one, and clearly we can see that this function here is not one-to-one -one because it fails the, hor the horizontal line test. But what we can do is we can restrict its domain to make it one-to-one. -one. So for example, I could say let's only let the domain, which is all the x values, be greater than or equal to negative one, which is the blue part of the graph. So we're going to restrict the domain to make it x greater than or equal to negative 1. Now, the blue one is 1 to 1. And it does have an inverse. And yes, you didn't have to pick greater than equal to negative 1. You could have picked any values for x so that the function is 1 to 1. You could have picked all values less than or equal to negative 1, and that would have worked as well. And if I were to take the blue graph and I would reflect it across the line y equals x, which is about here, its reflection would look like it does here on the right. Notice that it cuts cut off right there um, at the point negative 3, negative 1. And that's where it ends. Notice on the original graph, the, uh, the bottom of it, or the minimum point, was at negative 1, comma, negative 3, which is simply negative 3, negative 1 uh, swapped. So if we swap all the points uh, on the blue line here, um, you would get its reflection across the line y equals x, and you can see now it is a function. Because if I were to draw, a, uh, try to do the vertical line test, you notice that for every value of x, there's only one value of y. So this certainly is a function. This is a function, therefore it is an inverse. This is an inverse. of the function, of the blue function on the left. Of the blue function. Okay? But we had to do that only, a, that only works after we restrict the domain of the original function. Otherwise, it would not have an inverse. Well, I hope that's clear. 
um, because now it is your turn. What I want you to do is determine if the following functions have an inverse, and if a function does not have an inverse, we want you to restrict its domain so that it does. So in question one, the question is, does it has it have an inverse? Just yes or no. And in the second question, does it have an inverse? Yes or no. And in either case, if it does not, we want you to restrict its domain so that it's so that it does. So see, uh, just remember that in order for a function to have an inverse, it must be one to one. And if you use that little bit that we've learned, you should be able to answer these questions. Good luck, and see you again next time.